What's going on reef builders? I'm Jake Adams. Welcome to the reef builder studio for another video topic. For most of my videos, I almost always kind of focus on one single topic, but just to spice it up in this video, we're gonna talk about two different things. But the main purpose of this video is I'm finally gonna be fragging up that giant Duncan back there. Now it might not look really huge in terms of area, but in terms of density, there's polyps inside, underneath, and three dimensional polyps inside. Uh, yeah, so that guy, I wanted to frag this coral, I think last year, shortly after putting it in there, and you guys told me not to, but it's getting to the point where it's self-shading, there's some sponge kind of growing inside of it a little bit, and you know, just kind of feel like uh, making some frags. This guy, he's, um, he is on a magnetic mount right now, so we're gonna cut him up. I'd like to kind of save like three good chunks that are gonna be mostly unifacial, kind of pointing outwards, um, and we're gonna put those back on the glass, this big coral is actually sitting on a large piece of a magnet. So it's gonna be a little tricky, but before we get our hands wet, I want to show off a couple of fun skimmers that I got recently. So as you know, this year, pretty much conferences and events of all kind have been canceled. And so we're doing our best here at the studio and with Reef Builders to kind of bring some of the new gear to the studio. And probably one of the highest profile things to reach our inventory is three protein skimmers from Ultra Reef. Um, and we have, these are all just like finely crafted, machined lathe parts. There's not a single injected molded piece in here except for the pumps themselves. This is the smaller uh, Borei skimmer, and we haven't even used it yet, but I think you adjust it simply by twisting this part. I haven't tried that out yet. This is a little bit more of a classic Space Saber design. This is the uh, Ultra Reef Acula UKS. I think UKS stands for Ultra Compact Skimmer. Um, I failed to mention that this has uh, a special edition white high door uh, DC pump. This has a special edition clear CCHA uh, PSK 1000 plus. I'm not sure what the plus is for. Maybe just the everything's clear on the pump. And this is the big boy. This is probably one of the most powerful protein skimmers on the market today using the CCHA controllable PSK SDC needle wheel pump. This is one of the very few wirelessly controllable programmable pumps for protein skimmers on the market. Um, this is gonna get a lot more airtime in the future when we uh, get to uh, designing a sump for the big 400 gallon tank. But for today's video, we just wanna put a, do a quick plug in of this uh, protein skimmer here on the Red Sea Montipora dominated aquarium. So we've been thoroughly enjoying the Red Sea Reefer skimmer. I think this is the Reefer 900 and um, I have nothing bad to say about the skimmer. It's really great. Um, it's still, it's kind of like the peak of what you can get with an AC pump. They're basically using almost identical pumps. So I think that'll be a fun one-to-one -one comparison, but um, definitely for the record, I want to say that this whole system stays really clean. It doesn't need more or different protein skimming. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pull out this protein skimmer, pop in the other one and uh, keep it going. Whew. Well, as far as installs go, this should be pretty much plug and play as far as we're concerned. Um, one thing I do love about the Ultra Reef Protein Skimmer is it's got this, uh, this specially designed gasket that just makes seeding it into the aquarium. Um, I'm sorry, replacing the cup, um, quite a dream. I gotta say, I'm just a little bit hesitant to put this beautiful, finely machined white piece of art into the tank because it's never gonna be as clean again. And uh, it's definitely got a hefty base. Man, this thing takes up a lot less space than the old one. I'm really curious to see how it's gonna compare in terms of noise level, because this pump, instead of having, um, usually the, all your pumps kind of have like a vibration isolating feet, but Ultra Reef kind of went a different route and they kind of like cemented the entire pump to a big old block and then that block is screwed down to the base. So let's get the cup back on here. Man, there's so much room in this hump now. <laughs> to plug it in here. Oh, might want to open up the air. There we go. Oh. Ooh, that is really quiet. So I think I'm gonna do the air all the way open and then close it up right up to the 
get the water air level right up here to the uh, cup. I'm not sure if it's going to break in by the time we're finished with the video, but uh, we'll revisit this protein skimmer um, in a future clip at the very latest. So you know that feeling when you've had a coral that's been doing like really, really well in one spot in an aquarium and you don't really want to touch it, but you know that you should. This is exactly how I feel about my super old Duncan. I've had it for maybe about 10 years. I bought this thing as like, I want to say it had four or five polyps on it when I first got it. And um, it has been through a lot of different tanks. And like I said, it's grown three dimensionally, so it's not super huge. But um, I think it's, man, I think it's way bigger than I remember. I think it's uh, resting on a big magnetic mount. Ah, not so bad. There we go. Look at that, that's a whole little world in there. So that's one of those things I really don't like is that blue sponge. Um, it's not super damaging, but it's also not very helpful. But you can see how it's choking itself uh, of water flow and there's you know many colonies inside this coral entirely. So um, we're gonna pull this entire thing out, grab a tray, take it over to the workshop and see what we're working with. So I'm not really concerned about having it out, out of the water. Oh man, this is gonna be a lot more frags than I thought. And I think it's probably best that we'll, um, we'll be able to just blow off that blue sponge after we frag it up. So I think the game plan here is to cut it down to size. Oh man, look at all this sponge. This is why I don't like sponge at all. Game plan here is to try to isolate a few good chunks to retain and kind of put where this Duncan was. And then, uh, you know, kind of go to town on the rest. So I think also I'm gonna frag with the cutters first, and then we're gonna clean up the cuts on the saw. So I actually have not fragged up Duncan in a very long time. Actually, last time I fragged up Duncan was in the wild in Papua New Guinea, and that was the only time that I ever saw Duncan in the wild. Ooh, well, that's not working. Let me see if I can give it a, a hit. Ooh, that was perfect. Hey, that's a nice little chunk. Oh, that looks like a good little chunk right there too. Good medium-sized chunk. It's really hard to do this. I'm glad we got cameraman Evan holding the camera here. But I'm gonna try to give this. Hey, look at that. A three-handed maneuver using it. Hey, there's another good little chunk. So I'm not here to make tiny, tiny little frags. I just as soon have a bunch of nice little colonies. But if you wanna bring it in, this is exactly why I needed to cut up this coral. You have these little isolated coralites that were choking from the sponge and the coral itself. And you know, you see we've already lost some polyps completely. So we're gonna liberate those guys and uh, <laughs> let them actually live. God, I wish I kinda, I should've done this sooner. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, perfect, perfect. That's a good one. That's a good one. So one of the one of the uh, risks when you start fragging jumbo corals sometimes is you end up with a ton of frags and then you don't know where to put them and it gets really unmanageable. Oh yeah, yeah. There's another good large colony. This is actually going a lot better than I thought. I thought there was going to be like a ton, a ton of. Pieces. So this is kind of like the show piece, I, right in the middle that I definitely wanted to uh, preserve. He's really thick though, he's a thick boy. Okay, I think we have another small colony right here. This is, this is not advisable to, <laughs> to, to um, cut with cutters. The skeleton is really freaking dense and that's why I'm hitting it. Oh yeah, there we go, look at that. Yeah, and a couple small polyps there in the base. We're getting down to the piece that I really, really wanted the most. Man, this thing came down to size a lot faster. But you see this blue sponge that's just inside the coral? It doesn't get any light, but it just, you know, it chokes out the water flow. Oh, almost like I knowed what I was doing. Okay, so now what's remained is we have a little bit of piece here. We got a couple polyps there. Those are gonna be easy to cut. Let's see, what else do we have? We have some polyps here to make some small frags with. 
All right, so the more we get into it, the more we realize like there is so much more of this sponge than we previously thought. So it's definitely gonna take us a little bit of time to really excavate this uh, sponge off. I think we're gonna pull out the, um, uh, the water pick that we used uh, maybe a year ago to pull out, blow off some nudies. But in the meantime, I think I've picked four good chunks that we can go ahead and start prepping for returning into the aquarium. And then it's just gonna be a couple frags. So um, I'm gonna get that saw rolling. I think we can make two good chunks out of this guy right here. There's a one. Yeah, we'll keep this. You know what, we'll give, keep this guy having a little bit more of a stem. To, to glue down. How's that gonna sit? That's gonna sit like that? Yeah, it's gonna be pretty nice. And then, here's some of the, you know, the pieces that got choked out a little bit. Just simply from uh, being part of the mega colony. This one, I am going to try to save it. There's, I think if I put this in uh, some good conditions, it's going to come back. And since I've grown this out for a long time, I'd like to save as much of it as possible. And then this one, you know, we're going to go a little shorty on this one. It's going to be a little bitty frag with three heads. There's another one. This is another one of those choke, choked out pieces. I think I am gonna cut this off and sacrifice it because that'll grow algae and then that will cause more issues down the road. So sometimes you gotta know when to be a little bit more ruthless. and isolate those. That's trash. And then the other two showy pieces that we're gonna put together, I think we can keep that all intact. But, you know, if I get rid of this, these Kapalas will open up and just like, just kind of block that guy. So we're gonna, extricate that guy too. Hopefully I can uh, get in there cleverly. Mm. Mm. Ooh, that's a tough one. So if I put too much pressure on here, this whole thing will kind of break apart, which might be the play. And I think we're gonna have to do that, unfortunately. Ugh. The one thing about colonial coral colonies is though, nothing says you can't glue it back together. You know, after a period of time, you won't even notice. This species won't like regrow together. Like it won't fuse the way an SPS or an LPS coral might. All right, so yeah, so now we have some medium sized chunks. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give them a nice flat base. And Duncan's a really hardy coral, so there's not really much uh, danger of having it out in the water for too long. Booyah, booyah. We're gonna, you know what, I'm gonna leave that stem there because that actually might help us when we kind of re-aggregate this coral. And then one last piece, no, 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 oh, this is the last piece. So yeah, here's a perfect example. All this funky sponge, and we got some, you know, cruddy little guy. I'm gonna save that guy, but and cut off this guy and cut off this guy. So let's do that. Oop, it's gonna be a little bit tough. Man, my saw's been uh, choking a little bit. There's you. And then I think. 
Oh, this is where the XL saw would come in handy. I think I might be able to. Sometimes the coral fly frags go flying. This is a junky one. I'm gonna clean up the base. Oh boy, well, and I think I uh, bit off a little bit more than I wanted to chew. But here you see we kind of have a mess of uh, assorted frags, some stems, a couple big chunks, and a lot of blue sponge. So we are going to turn the camera off for a little bit to clean up some of the sponge, get the extra pieces and water, and uh, we'll come back around when it's time to glue these guys down. All right, so we started picking off some of the sponge um, kind of manually just picking it off but as you can see there's all these little bits of sponge that are gonna grow back so I pulled out the uh, the trusty water pick and um, this is for flossing your teeth but it's basically like a miniature pressure washer and since there's a lot of splashing water we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn that on turn this on oh yep and once the bubbles clear you can see how it just just obliterates the sponge off of there. We can really, really get down to the base. Get all the little pieces, because you know the tiniest little bit of sponge and it's gonna regrow. I mean, I don't, I don't think that we're gonna eradicate it. I'm sure on a long enough timeline it's gonna come back. But now, just a little, little bit of cleaning and uh, it's virtually perfect. So we're gonna keep, uh, keep at it with uh, cleaning up the rest of these Duncans and then uh, figure out what needs to be mounted and how. So I thought we'd just pull off a Duncan, knock off a coop, couple branches, you know, and it'd be a little easy peasy, but that blue sponge turned out to be a little bit harder to pull off. I don't know if you guys got a good look, but here is the uh, water pick, got a reservoir. It's kind of a miniature pressure washer in here and you can control um, when it's going. But man, that really did the job. And we had to blow off like a little bit of this coral tissue at the line where the sponge was growing. And what's so really surprising, and it's a testament to how hardy Duncan corals are is they just went through like this intense uh, pressure washing bath system and you can see like it's only been a few minutes and already opened up again so this is a really healthy coral and um, I had the coral on like a big single magnetic base because there's one single coral but we're gonna cheat a little bit and then I have this um, slightly hacked up Zen Reef frag rack. I actually had to cut this off because a uh, limelight hydnophora had grown over the entire thing so I had to cut it off to save that coral. So I'm gonna pick a handful of the best pieces and uh, put it back in the tank. Um, I think I'm gonna let Evan do, do a lot of the straggler frags and uh, we will return when the coral is back in the tank and then we're gonna check out uh, check up on that protein skimmer and see how it's going. So the Ultra Reef has been, uh, the Oculus skimmer has been rolling for, I don't know, maybe like two or three hours. It's already broken in, starting to skim a little bit. And not that the Red Sea Reefer was loud or anything, but this is just substantially quieter. I think it has to do with instead of trying to isolate the vibrations with rubber and silicone, the pump is like fastened onto this really heavy base to try to prevent the pump from vibrating in the first place. And there might be some other tricks to the uh, CJ uh, Plus, the PSK Plus designation that Ultra Reef um, has with these. So it's a beautiful looking skimmer. I think it's gonna perform more or less the same as the Red Sea Reefer did. Um, but uh, the main event is really the new 
chopped up Duncan. So we have probably as many this time, this many polyps in the other tank. And I'm really impressed at how well the polyps have opened up already. I mean, we're like, we're not brushing it, but we're pressure washing it. And um, that water pick, we don't use it that often, but when we use it for an application like this, it's a lifesaver. If we had to use a scraper to try to get that sponge off, we would have been at it forever and it wouldn't have been nearly as satisfying as using a miniature pressure washer. And the only thing I don't really like about this setup right now is they're all on a flat frag rack. Kind of got a little bit lazy just to get them in the tank. So I think what I'd like to do down the road is put each one of them either probably on its own magnetic base so they can all go on the back and instead of being just a flat field, we'll kind of make a, you know, some kind of uh, irregular shape to make it look a little bit more natural. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, also mixing it up a little bit so it's not just fragging or just a protein skimmer. So we have a little bit of reef gear and a little bit of reef life. So um, if you have any questions about anything we talked about in this video, go ahead and pop those down in the comments below. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe I got some really, really special content in the way. This is almost just a filler video to buy me some time to finish editing that other footage. So um, thanks for joining us on this video from the Reef Builder Studio, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.